Brothers and sisters, I didn't come here to sell a book. I am delighted to come here and sell an idea. And the idea is this. I am tired of tinkering around the edges, and I'm tired of small fixes. We have fundamental problems in this country, and we need fundamental solutions. Right on. around the edges of campaign finance reform. I want a constitutional amendment that says corporations are not people. I don't want to wait till the next close presidential election and the next Supreme Court intervention on behalf of the next George W. Bush. I want to eliminate the Electoral College and give the power to elect presidents to the people. And I don't want ever again, I don't want ever again to have a session of the Supreme Court where a group of justices will sit comfortably in their power, in their elite positions, and decide whether we need a Voting Rights Act in this country. I want a constitutional amendment that guarantees the right to vote and the right to have your vote counted in the United States of America. Once and for all, 230 years is too long to wait. And I know you're going to say to me, why, Mr. Nichols, I'm delighted that you came. But all this talk about constitutional amendments, that scares me. Because we've never amended the Constitution of the United States before. It was written in stone in 1787, and it has stood in that stone ever since. But of course, that's the ultimate lie. When the Constitution of the United States was written in 1787, the people of the United States had the good sense to say, we don't want this thing. And you're like, well, hold it, that's not what Michelle Bachman told me. <laughs> well, no, the people of the United States demanded that that Constitution be amended immediately with a bill of rights that guaranteed that we, the people, had the right to assemble and to petition for the redress of grievances. We were given the rights to make demands on our government, and the only reason this country has moved forward is that sometimes We've had the guts to go into the streets and into the communities and into the rural towns across this country and to the capital in Washington. Fifty years ago, Martin Luther King Jr., the march on Washington for jobs and equality, we have had the willingness to go and make those demands to assemble and petition for the redress of grievances, and every time we have done it, we have amended that Constitution to make it a better document. Well, brothers and sisters, we need to do it again. We need to do it again because we are no longer a democracy in this country. We may be taught that we are a democracy. We may want to believe we are a democracy. But the fact of the matter is, when Barack Obama can be re-elected President of the United States by a five million vote margin, by a landslide in the Electoral College with a higher percentage of the vote than John Kennedy in 1960, than Richard Nixon in 1968, than Jimmy Carter in 1976, than Bill Clinton in 1992 or 1996, than George W. Bush when he lost in 2000 and when he lost again in 2004, and then Ronald Reagan in 1980, remember, Barack Obama won a higher percentage of the vote in this last election than Ronald Reagan got in 1980 when Reagan and the conservatives said they had earned the right to fundamentally change America. When we have landslides of that order and we cannot get basic economic and social justice, then something has gone horribly awry. Our democracy has been diminished. It has been turned into a dollarocracy where those with immense wealth may lose an election and then move back into position to win it again by other means.
This is fundamentally wrong, brothers and sisters. This is why we amend Constitution. It changes the I know, I know, this is a event for a group, for progressive Democrats of America. I don't endorse groups, and I don't endorse parties. But I will tell you this, I come out and talk about groups that actually want to make change. Because I am fundamentally tired of a no change circumstance. I don't want my daughter, who is here today, who is nine years old, I don't want her to grow up. I do not want my daughter to grow up in a country where we continue to wrestle over the question of whether anybody will have health care or not have health care. That is a fundamental human right. I'm tired of that today. I want it to be finished and I want it guaranteed. I want to go a lot further than that. I don't want to live in a country where we can take parents of kids like Whitman and close their factories because of failed trade policies, because of failed economic policies, leave them unemployed, and then say it's their problem, it's their fault. I'm sorry, Franklin Roosevelt was right. If people are unemployed, we put them to work. That is what you need in a fundamentally functional country. But we aren't going to get to these places. We are not going to get to these places unless we talk about fundamental change. And the first the truest fundamental change is not about electing somebody to office. It's not about electing a political party. It's about a creating a circumstance where democracy itself can work. And we have to do that. And I know you're going to say, well, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Nichols, we can't even get the Congress of the United States to say that they ought to stop shooting guns off in schools. We can't get we can't get the Congress of the United States to take a simple stand on the most basic of issues. 92% of the people will be for something. We still can't get action on it. Well then, we ought to stop worrying about the specific issue and start worrying about the under, underlining, underpinning, underwhelming political circumstance of the country. And the political circumstance of the country is we need to make fundamental changes, and we can't. The interesting thing about America is that we have never, ever confronted a crisis situation and not dealt with it. If we don't amend our Constitution repeatedly and rapidly to address the circumstances of the moment we are in, then we will be the first American generation to reject our responsibility, the Jeffersonian responsibility, to amend and update our Constitution so it reflects the challenges of our time. We will be the first, and I don't want to be a part of that. And I will tell you, the last time we were this bad off wasn't that long ago. I know this is a young audience, and so we are unfamiliar with some of our history. But a hundred years ago, a hundred years ago now, if you woke up in an American town, any town in America, and you said, what country do I live in? You would say, I live in a country where the majority of its citizens cannot vote. Women cannot vote. People of color cannot vote. In the south of the United States, even poor people were denied vote because of their economic circumstances. That's a hundred years ago. You said, that's not the half of it. Even if we could vote, we don't get to choose our U.S. Senate. Our U.S. Senate is chosen in backroom deals. It's appointed. Billionaires bribe their way into Senate seats. And if we could vote, and if we could elect our Senate, we still wouldn't have the power to do anything because we don't have an internal revenue system. We don't have a tax system in this country. We can't tax the rich. We can't tax corporations. We can't have progressive taxation. Stop. Our host is sitting there saying, sounds like now. A hundred years ago, we looked at that circumstance in 1910 and we said, we don't have, the, we don't have any of this. And we have Bob and girls in factories in Lynn, Massachusetts, in Lawrence, Massachusetts, little girls younger than my daughter, putting the bobbins on machines because the machines were so dangerous that they might lose their fingers and they didn't want to lose the finger of an adult woman. We had adult women in New York City when their factory caught on fire, jumping 10, 12, 13 stories to their death because the doors in their factories were locked, not in Bangladesh, but in Soho in New York City. A hundred years ago in America, 
And people like you said, no, we're done with this. And in 10 years, in 10 years, we amended the Constitution of the United States to have an elected Senate, not an appointed Senate. And that same year, in fact, 100 years ago, yesterday, we certified that our Senate is now responsive to the voters, not merely to backroom deals. I know it's, we've lost a lot of ground since then. <laughs> but 100 years ago, we created the Internal Revenue Service. Nothing of the New Deal could have occurred had the Internal Revenue Service not been created 100 years ago. And less than 100 years ago, we gave the vote to women. In a 10 year period, we went from a circumstance where the majority of Americans could not vote to a circumstance where the majority of Americans could vote. We went from a circumstance where our Senate was not elected to a situation where the whole of our Congress was elected. And we went from a circumstance where that election didn't mean anything to a circumstance where it meant everything because you had the power to tax and to do an equitable distribution of income. We did not make our country perfect, but we changed our country fundamentally in a 10 year period. And I would say brothers and sisters, as we gather here today, no more small fixes, no more small goals. I want the 10 years from 2010 to 2020 to mean as much as the 100 years before. I want us, I want us to finish this decade with a constitutional amendment that says corporations are not people. I want us to finish this decade with a constitutional amendment that says the Electoral College doesn't decide who the President of the United States is. The people of the United States decide who the President is. And I want a constitutional amendment that says every American has a right to vote and a right to have that vote counted. And I will tell you that of all the groups I've encountered, Progressive Democrats of America doesn't say, oh, can you explain that a little more to me? <laughs> Jim Carpenter says, I was thinking about that the other day. We've already started working on it. And that's the bottom line. Don't get associated with a group that has to catch up. Get associated with a group that's on our hands. As I conclude, if I did not say that my daughter, not really understanding the whole of the fundraising circumstances, I do not either, said, said, was trying to figure out a way to raise money in politics, and she said, how about this? If somebody gives a $100 contribution, Jim Hightower will jump into the pool naked. Now, if somebody gives a $1,000 contribution, he'll do it clothed. So consider your circumstance, brothers and sisters. You have options. You have choices in this republic. And the ultimate option and the ultimate choice is that you will not die you will not die in an America that is less than the America that was given to you. The simple fact of the matter is, if this republic becomes a dollarocracy, not a democracy, then the progress of 100 years ago, then the progress of 50 years ago, then all the progress that has meant so much to us, and indeed that defines the term progressive, will be meaningless. Because the fact of the matter is, if we can win an election and have the dollarocracy reorganize and win the governmental period, then we have lost the whole of the experiment. I don't want to lose the whole of the experiment. I want this country to be dramatically better than it was when I was born. And I'm willing to fight and struggle and persevere to make sure that the Constitution of this republic, that the constitution of this republic defends and extends democracy, not dollarocracy. Thank you, brothers and sisters.